friends. Welcome back to Call Me After Coffee. My name is Bree. If you're new here, welcome. If you've been around for a while, thanks for coming back. Today, we are filming my November possibility pile. I may be putting up a second video for Gilmarathon, but for now, these are just my November general um, possibility pile books. So, Jumping right into the books. The first book that I have on the stack is Words of Radiance by Brandon Sanderson. I have literally been working on this bad boy since like um, April, March, possibly, I think March, maybe even February. It's been a long time. That being said, uh, there was like a solid three months that I didn't even touch it. So I recently jumped back into this in October. Super loving this. Finally hit the 700 page mark, passed it by a little bit. Very excited to put a lot of effort into this book over the next couple of months because I would love, love, love to have it done by the end of this year. I do not want to drag it out any further than I already have. And I'm really, really loving the story. So I've been giving it a lot more attention lately and super loving it so far. So definitely going to pay attention to that one. Next one is a really hideous cover. I know, I know. I know. But this is No Exit by Taylor Adams. And this is, I believe, a book club pick for the Cloud Atlas book club, I think. I happened to just pick it up and then they made it the group book. So I figured it's for November and December, but I'm going to try and get to it in November because I have quite a TBR for December that is pretty ambitious, but it's a lot of like short Christmas books. So we'll get to that when we get to that. Uh, I'm very curious. I've heard a lot of people say really good things about this book. Like not that the book is good in content, but that is a really good read. It will keep you up. So I am definitely looking forward to giving this one a try. As far as I know, this is about a girl who is driving back to her hometown and there's a blizzard because of course there's a blizzard and she gets stuck at a truck, truck stop. And I believe there's like a child in the car that she parks next to. And then she's trying to figure out like why this child's in the car, who took this child, what's going on. And then I that's the that's as far as I know that's the plot I've definitely had some interest in it over the last while but like you guys know hit thrillers are kind of hit or miss for me so this popped up on book outlet for like I don't know four bucks or something so I was like you know what I'm gonna give it a try the next one is the bestiary I think it's bestiary I don't think it's bestiary I think it's bestiary but it might be bestiary I'm not entirely sure correct me because I'm not sure, um, by Kaming Chang. And this one I was sent, this one is actually the one that I think might work for Gilmarathon. So anyway, I might use this one for Gilmarathon. I literally didn't think about that until I started filming this. So that was an accidental win. But uh, this one, I don't really know exactly what it's about. I quickly just looked in the front tab just in case anybody is interested um, and it just says, I'm just going to read like the first couple lines. One evening, mother tells daughter a story about a tiger who lives in a woman's body. She was called Hugo Po and she hungered to eat children, especially their toes. Soon afterward, daughter awakes with a tiger tail. Sounds cool. Sounds weird. I'm going to try it. This one is called The Beguiling by Susie Gartner. I was also sent this one by Penguin Canada. This one is another one I don't know much about. And again, I'm kind of going to go in blind. I believe this is like a modern Gothic um, style story. And I think it's about this woman who is like, I, I don't really know how to explain it, but it's like, apparently people feel compelled to like tell her their deepest, darkest secrets or something like that. And apparently it's supposed to be like slightly humorous, but like really dark humor and then also a little creepy. So I figured I didn't get to this one or the bestiary in October. So I figured, you know what, I'll just carry them over to November and see what I think of them if I get to them. But it sounds really interesting, but also kind of creepy and weird. So definitely interested in this one. Another one that I threw on the pile was Northanger Abbey by Jane Austen. To be honest, I completely forgot about this one in October. Someone told me it was a really good fall slash winter read. I don't remember who said that, but somebody left a comment under one of my videos. Uh, and I have been meaning to read it for ages and I purposefully saved it for the fall season and fall is almost done now. I am going to try because I haven't read as many classics as I wanted to this year. So hopefully I can add some more before the year is up. And this one is quite short, so I don't think it'll take me very long at all to get through. This one is a request from my son. This is one of his favorite series. I haven't read it yet. He's read it like four times this year alone, like the, the whole four books he has read at least I think four times since we bought them for him in March. And this is The Prince Warriors by Priscilla Shearer and Gina Detweiler. I don't really know what this one is about, but as far as I know, Priscilla wrote this, I think for her son, her oldest son. 
Um, but Rainer absolutely loves these these books and he's been asking me to read them for a while and I keep forgetting. So I brought it up to my room to put it on my nightstand so that I can't forget to get to it. Um, he already got me to read Wish, which I loved, and he was so excited that I loved, and this is another one that he really wants me to read, and I think he has a couple other series that he wants me to read as well, which I'm gonna have to pick up at some point. And last but not least, y'all, it is Bridge of Clay month. I will be rereading Bridge of Clay for a third time. You guys don't know, now you do. I adore this book. I have read this every November for the last, well, this will be the third year. Um, I got it the first year that it came out. It was a new release. I was so excited. I am probably one of the few people on this planet who thinks as highly of this book as I do, but I swear, Bridge of Clay, if you give it the time, it's one of those books you need to give it time. You need to let it just open itself up. It's a true onion of a story. It peels back the layers and it is slow and beautiful and I love it. I loved every page. Quick warning, there is my least favorite curse swear phrase in the world in this book all over the place. The one brother, it's like his catchphrase. Um, so me being the nerdy weirdo that I am, went through the book and literally just scribbled it out all over because I don't like that particular use of the phrase. Um, so anyway, I'm not gonna say it out loud, obviously, but it's like JC or GD. I don't like when people use that as a swear and this person in this book does a lot. But that being said, it's just the one character's dialogue. It's not throughout the whole book. It's not like the narration of the story is all like that. I love this story. If you love The Outsiders, but you wanted kind of more from it, because I love The Outsiders, but you wanted more from it, this is kind of that. Um, you have five boys, the Dunbar brothers, and growing up without parents, their mother dies and their father is gone. And the book is finding out why it is about, it's about building bridges, but in like both the um, hypothetical and literal sense of the word. There are all these quirky characters. There is a mule named Achilles. Um, there is sort of like a budding romance. It's just, oh, it's so good. It's so good. And he writes even like some characters who do unlikable things. He writes these characters in a way that that you just love them and I love that the brothers are like they're rough and tumble like the brothers and the outsiders but and they also love each other like the brothers and the outsiders and I literally just can't get enough of this book and I feel like this is going to be one of those ones that I will continue to reread like forever plus this cover is like one of the most beautiful things I've ever seen anyway I have talked about this book this is pretty much a wrap-up for this book because it's gonna get five stars again obviously has the last two years gonna get another one um but if anybody feels like reading bridge of clay in november your girl has the dms open you can message me comment down below you can message me on instagram i flipping love this book so much i'm gonna say the story really doesn't get going until probably like 70 pages in but i don't even care because upon the reread the beginning is so beautiful but you just don't know it until you finished and then you're like <gasps> and you just sob all over it all the time so Yes, that was a way longer possibility pile uh, video because I had to gush about my favorite book of all time and I'm gonna gush about it again in the wrap up and I'm not even sorry about it. So anyway, let me know down below. What are you planning on reading in November? Are any of these books on your list? You guys know the questions I usually ask. Have you read Bridge of Clay? Did you hate it? Let me know down below. And while you're down there, if you haven't subscribed already, please do and hit the bell so you don't miss future notifications. I am trying to get my schedule back on track with Mondays and Thursdays, so we'll see how we do with that. And I will talk to you guys all next time. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.